Hello everyone, my name is Anil Bajpi. Welcome to Education Tattu. We are working on flowable series and today we are going to complete a very important topic that is on Spring Boot integration with flowable. So be with me. To be able to start with, first we need to open a Spring Initializer so that we should be able to generate a Spring Boot project in here. We can give group name as education.word.example you can use anything what you want so this is very specific to your need and uh, feel free to use this accordingly next is we need to provide some name so name here we can give is global integration demo project for spring boot integration with flowable and then with java 11 and jar we can change it to var and then we can generate this project what it does it downloads a file which is a spring boot project that you can open on eclipse or any other id so we are going to use eclipse i have unzipped this file onto some folder on my d drive so here what we need to do we need to import this project since it's a maven project so we need to import existing maven project next we need to provide its directory and browse you will see that the pom.xml is already identified which is the basis of any maven project we need to do finish so there is a prerequisite if you have not set up your maven path earlier you need to watch my earlier videos and you should set that up in here if we see this this is all set in pom.xml we can see couple of entries so by default with this configuration it provides you spring boot starter along with embedded tomcat so if we run this flowable integration application java it will start running on localhost 8080 port but this is not uh, integrated with flowable at this moment for that we need to add couple of dependencies so to be able to add dependency for s2 database which will be in memory database for any table that flowable requires at the runtime we are going to add that first and then i'm going to add another dependency which is very specific to flowable there is the dependency for flowable i'll be sharing this code on github and that link will be shared on the description itself so uh, no worries on it yep here if you will notice that i'm using flowable version so this variable need to be initialized and for this example we are going to use 6.5.0 though the latest version is 6.6.0 the only thing there are some of the compatibility with the spring boot with 6.5.0 so if we save this now the dependencies on the maven are downloaded and you can see all these jars available in here next thing we need to add some of the folders which are very specific to flowable and that has to be added under resources folder so we are going to create some folders first folder is processes for keeping the process file bpman file then we have cases or cmmn file then we have dmn or anything specific to rules and then we can have forms though we can have another folder for application as well but in this demo we are simply going to demonstrate the bpm process and how does this started uh, we are going to keep this demonstration very simple the next thing what we need to do is we are going to create a process file so within process folder we are going to create a file here is a thing that uh, that is important when we are creating a bpman file with a spring boot uh, approach we need to create a file with dot xml as an extension 
so for that let's give it some so we can give the name as one task process bpm2.0.xml so xml is uh, the extension of this file in general or uh, in most of the cases you will see that dot bpmn or dot cmn is the extension but for a spring boot example we are going to use this with dot xml in here we are going to create a very simple process so i have already this process is already ready with me i'm going to paste it in here this is one task process which means it has one start activity then the flow then the user task and another flow towards the end so this looks very simple in terms of the process this is very uh, straightforward process with single human task we are going to save this now also we need to add a couple of properties in application dot properties so that we can say that it is going to run on s2 database we have to make some of the entries in application dot properties maybe prior to that we can just try running this and see if uh, everything is working fine so for that i think i, I think i run this in the background but let's run this again this is going to build this project going to start let me maximize the console output so this time this is trying to make a spring boot server up and running this will be running on 8080 port this has picked up the common.sql file and it is trying to generate some of the dmls so with all this you can see that 8080 port this application is up and running but to be able to understand whether the process was created or not we need to add a couple of lines of code in our application.java file so to be able to see if the process gets deployed or not we need to add a couple of lines of codes so that is in my clipboard i'm just copying it and then there are some some of the dependencies that i need to resolve this is fine this is also fine if you go for 6.6.0 you may not find repository services here there are other ways to implement the same thing so don't get confused with that so here engine dot task service so what we are going to task service global dot engine this is done we will need to remove the overwrite from here okay so this is all set do we have extra braces here let's quickly check this is opening here and closing this one about this we don't have we are just missing one all good now after doing this if we run in if, if we rerun our uh, application file it should show us some of the messages that shows the process is already deployed let's have a look it will not take much time so as we can see number of process definition is one number of task is zero that is obvious because we have not created any tasks so far a number of tasks after processes start is one so this is how we can understand that the process is deployed in the next upcoming sessions we are also going to talk about some of uh, some of the database table where we can also highlight how you can identify that the process is deployed or not so now next thing is which is very much important that you need to add rest support because most of the engine specific features you may want to utilize through the rest endpoints so for that let's just collapse this one in pom.xml you need to add one more dependency and that is very specific to rest web services save this one it will download some of the maven dependencies which enable the rest support 
and then we are going to do some of the changes so first thing we can add my service class and this we are going to expose as a service just to save you time i'm going to copy and paste in here i'm going to mention the github link so don't worry about the code and here also uh, the blog that i referred to create this i'm going to mention that as well this guy did a good job this is done this is also fixed and these are list and tasks so java.util and here since we are using flowable task so it is always good to go with task.api okay so all errors are fixed while creating this service now we need to create a rest controller so again uh, do we need to talk about what are the services let me just uh, give it you a quick way so in here what we are going to do we are going to use two methods basically one is to start a process so for that we are going to extend its functionality and then the another one is getting number of tasks so there we are going to utilize task service create task query and then the task assigning so these are some of the methods that we are going to explore we need to create a rest controller for that let's create another class all this my rest controller in here we are going to again copy and paste some of the code to save some time import rest controller and in the background i'm going to import all these dependencies. So i have imported all the dependencies now this is good we can close this services so if we look at the code right now what we have done we have created a my service dot java which has two methods the start process and get task the start process is to start with instance key whereas get task is to get the list of tasks from the task query service task service dot uh, create task query in the rest controller we have couple of controllers here one is the post mapping which is invoking my service dot start process that we just talked about in the service and then we have another controller or the path for request mapping and this is of type get this is with slash task and what it is going to do in internally this will first call my service dot get task based on the assignee and then it will prepare a list of tasks and return it so that is something you can see as a json we have created a static inner class which is a task representation it has two uh, fields id and name and then it's setter getter so that is how we configured next is we need to run this and need to as the postman so i am assuming you already have the postman installed if you don't have please install one i'll share the description of postman link uh, i'll share the url of the postman download link in the description so let me just launch postman from so here comes your postman ui let me know if you have any discomfort in installing and uh, launching this postman i should be able to create a separate session for that just know me in the uh, just let me know in the comment box so we are providing the necessary path so since it's running on localhost 8080 and then the context url for that is process so if we click on it we can see 
method not allowed did it reach to my request method get not supported the reason is it is a post request okay so if we see this has reached out to my tomcat and in here since we don't have like um, we, we just initiated a process through this process task as you can see in here it is starting a process now since we were creating these tasks for a definite user we need to change this request to have the number of tasks assigned to a user again for that we need to do http on forward slash localhost 8080 and then we need to provide tasks and whom it was assigned to as you can see that this is the user where i am assigning all these tasks so we can see that one task was assigned when we ran this process and one task was assigned when we clicked on the process so if we just run this again it should be three now yeah so i hope you should be able to see how this is internally working this first endpoint is actually creating a process task whereas the other one is giving me the list of tasks assigned to a particular user there are some additional things that I want to cover. We can actually enable the actuator endpoints in this Spring Boot application. For that, we need to enable a couple of dependencies. So let's enable those dependencies quickly. Again, moving to pom.xml, adding dependencies here. I always prefer to align this so that it should be more readable. I like clean code approach. So with this actuator, what are we going to achieve? With this actuator, we should be able to check the info and health related applications of, of this application. We need to enable a couple of properties to be able to access some of the information. So on application.properties, we can say that we want management endpoint label enabled true health shutdown environment information flavorable mapping these are some of the exposure in uh, endpoint that we want to access through this actuator so with this if we just save overall application this will download some of the dependencies we need to rerun our application and if we click on the actuator endpoint we should be able to see how this is working so our workspace is now built we can run this again as a java application so that it can start working on your embedded apache tomcat on 8080 port so let's build our url by that time we need to have this on localhost 8080 the only thing uh, in this url will be changed is the actuator url let's quickly swap and see if yeah this is up and running app engine is created all good if we click on this actuator endpoint we can see the number of actuator endpoints flowable health information etc which are available with this actuator dependency this was added if we need to see in the flowable what we have we can simply copy this and paste it in here and see that what is the deployed version what is the number of running tasks so it is giving the metadata information about the flowable engine we can also check the health so for that we need to change actuator plus health and we can send this so this is saying us like what is the status of s2 database what is the status of overall service so that is something which i wanted to cover as a part of uh, spring boot integration part one then in the part two i want to talk about some of the s2 database table that i'll be covering in the next session so hope you are liking the series overall as I'm receiving some of the feedbacks and questions. So in, uh, just, just let me know any feedback. If you have on the comment box, reach out to me on education.gmail.com. 
I'll be happy to improve in overall session delivery. Thanks for watching. If you have not subscribed to this channel, please go and subscribe. Thank you. Thank you.